Hey guys, Mr. Zigner here. We're looking at lesson 7-4, the percent equation. You can see we're going to be finding the part, finding the percent, finding the whole, and even looking at a real world example. Let's get started. So here this first one, what number is 72% of 500? There's a couple things I need you to remember for this particular lesson in the percent equation. Is, whenever you see the word is, that's going to mean the equals sign. Of, well that's going to be multiplication. If you can remember those two items, you're really going to have little to no trouble setting up these percent equations. Alright, let's get rolling on this one. So what number this starts off with? Well, that's our variable. That's the thing we don't know. Now we have the word is. Is is our equal sign. 72%. So we just write our 72%. Of, as we said earlier, of means to multiply. And then I just bring down my 500. Did you see that? Each part of the sentence, the question there, actually turns into one part of the equation. So I'm left with n equals 72% times 500. So really all I have to do on this particular problem is multiply 72% times 500. So let's bring a calculator up and we'll figure that out. Uh, we have 72%, so that's 0 0.72 times 500. And that gets us 360. Is that one of our answers? Yes, there it is. So it turns out that 360 is 72% of 500. All right, let's move on. 18 is what percent of 80? All right, so do you remember the is is equals? And remember that of is multiplying. So we just bring down our 18 is, that's my equal sign, what percent, I'll just use a P here for percent, of, that's times, 80. Are you seeing that? Each word in the question actually turns into a small part of the equation. All right, so now I've got 18 equals P times 80. Let's simplify that a little bit. So that'll be 18 equals, well, 80 times P is just 80 P. Okay, now I need to isolate that variable. I think we can do that in one step. The opposite of multiplying by 80 would be dividing by 80. Divide that side by 80. As you know, those cancel out. They equal 1. And so I'm left with P equaling whatever 18 divided by 80 is. All right, well, I think I'm going to grab my calculator for that one. 18 divided by 80 is 0 0.225, 0 0.225, but as we know, percents are out of 100, so really to get that decimal in the right place, we need to multiply that by 100. There we go, so now our final answer, the percent is 22.5%, and yep, that does match answer choice B up here. So it turns out that 18 is 22.5% of 80. All right, let's move on. Let's scoot this over a little bit. 36 is 90% of what number? All right, well, we bring our 36 down. Is means equals 90%. Just write a 90%. Of times what number? Okay, I'm just going to... Maybe use n for a number there. And you know what? Since I have a variable, I'm going to change that to a dot for times. Alrighty, so 36 equals 90% times n. Okay, let's simplify that a little bit. And we got the 36 here. I'm going to rewrite 90% as a 0 0.90. Although, really, I guess I could just write it as 0.9. That's the same thing as 90% times n. Okay, well, 90% times n would be, well, in this case, 0 0.9 times n is just 0.9n. There we go. All right, so I've got 36 equals 0.9n. 
All right, well, the opposite of multiplying by 0.9 would be dividing by 0.9. Divide by 0.9. So obviously those are going to cancel out. They equal 1. So we have n equals, all right, time for the calculator. So I've got 36. I'm going to divide that by 0.9. And we get 40. And that seems, oh, there we go. Answer choice C. Great. Okay, let's see if we have another one. Uh-oh, word problem. Right, here we go. So a local college has an enrollment of 25,700 students. That's a lot of kids. Of these students, 22% are from out of state. How many of the students are from out of state? Well, 22% of them are from out of state. 22% of this 25,700. Yeah, 22% 22 of the 25,700 are from out of state. Okay, so that would turn into 22% of, as we know, means times 25,700. Alrighty, so that's all we have to do is just multiply, knowing that of means multiplying. So we do 22%, that would be 0.22. Just move that decimal 2 to the left. And now times the 25700, 25,700. And we end up with 5,654. There it is. Yep. We got it. So it turns out that 5,654 of this college's students are from out of state. All right, well, let's see what we have next. Oh, here's the concept summary. All right, so here's what these problems look like and what you would do. Now, in the case of finding the percent, it's going to look something, something like this. What number is 50% of 6? And see the setup? It's just like I was doing. So what number, there's your variable, is, there's your equal sign, 50%, now here the book changed it to 0.5, of, that's times, 6. And there's the 6. Perfect. If you're finding the part, it might look something like this one. So 3 is what percent of 6? No, so you got that 3 at the beginning, there's a 3. Is, is the equal sign what percent, okay, there's your variable for the percent, of, again, means times six. Bam. So what per, three is what percent of six? That's what that equation would look like. And finally, I didn't use red yet. Here we go. What if you needed to find the whole? So now you have three is 50% of what number? So that would look something like this. So you have the three at the beginning again. Is, is is equals. 50%, again, they used 0.5 for that, of what number? Of is times, and then what number? So you don't know what that number is yet, so that's where they're using, in this case, the variable w. All right, so there's three different ways these problems are going to look, depending on if you have to figure out the percent, the part, or the whole. And there we go. We've made it to the end again. Thanks for joining me for the percent equation. If you're one of my students, just complete those questions underneath this video on my website. And, uh, well, thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining me as we work our way through the 7th grade Math Connects textbook. Feel free to email me with any questions. My website is www.mattzigner.com. On my site, you'll find links to my math blog, some of my favorite educational sites, and lots of helpful information for students, parents, and teachers. See you next time.